your natural state for most human beings is to encounter REM sleep during your sleep cycles until DARPA finally re releases the technology to free us from sleep. Uh, <laughs> if DARPA, if you're listening and you need a test subject, I can't volunteer my colleagues, but I am so there. History is riddled with unexplained events. You can turn back now or learn the stuff they don't want you to know. Hey guys, a uh, long time listener, love the show. Um, was going through some of the older episodes that I either haven't listened to or that I enjoy listening to again. And um, one of them that I had recently listened to was about the third eye, the parietal lobe. And I was wondering if you guys have had any anecdotal evidence with this or not, but me and my friends have discussed, um, this obviously can't be um, real studies as we're not qualified to do that. And it's and marijuana is not a schedule, is on the schedule one list about the effects of when you quit smoking marijuana after a point in time, how you have extremely vivid dreams and how it seems almost as if marijuana in some way uh, dampens your parietal lobe while using it heavily. But when you quit using it for a period of time, your parietal lobe kicks into heavy gear. Um, if you guys have any research into this or have heard anybody else having similar experiences, would love to hear more about it. Um, you can feel free to use this on air and let's go with my name as the Jolly Green Giant. Thank you. Well, uh, Jolly Green Giant, first off, excellent taste in name, my friend. Uh, maybe it's just because I'm hungry, but I am feeling this vibe. It's a good question. <laughs> it really is because, uh, you know, just like alcohol, uh, marijuana can diminish the quality of your sleep, specifically your REM stage, where that's where you're dreaming, right? So uh, there are reports that say a lot of people who are... Uh, consider themselves regular habitual marijuana smokers or ingesters of some sort uh, do report they either don't dream or they don't remember their dreams, but also people who don't uh, engage with those substances and never have may also not have an easy time remembering their dreams. The, the easy way to do it really is to treat it like an exercise, keep a little dream journal and write stuff down when you wake up. Um, that's that's the best way to start, you know, uh, best way to memorize, remember your dreams rather, and then build toward lucid dreaming. Yeah, yeah lucid dreaming uh, is super fascinating. Uh, I, I wish I had the discipline or the wherewithal to do it. Like I've mentioned before, I think one of my favorite artists, musicians, uh, Richard D. James, Aphex Twin, uh, made supposedly, he's a bit of a troll, so it's hard to know if he's telling the truth or not all the way, but um, one of his records, Selected Ambient Works Volume 2, he supposedly composed the entire thing while in lucid dream states. Wow. Well, okay, let's let uh, just quickly let's go to the Jolly Green Giant. So the concept here, and I'm not, I'm a little unsure, Mister Giant, uh, if that is your real name, whether you're really referring to the parietal lobe, which is kind of the top, slightly back part of your brain, um, if you're talking about that, or specifically the pineal gland, because I think in the episode we focus on conspiracies around the pineal gland and the functions of it, either being inhibited or enhanced by drug use and, and meditation and other things. Um, and the concept that that pineal gland, that tiny little rice uh, shaped and sized thing is actually your third <laughs> eye. Um, but this is a fascinating concept to me. I've never connected the idea that weed smoking affecting your sleep may actually be affecting either your pineal gland or you know your parietal lobe or whatever it is in some way. Uh, other than the kind of feeling you have while you are experiencing the high of marijuana, right? That that sense of connection and strangeness. You know, you always hear too about like certain drugs that people take to quit smoking. Um, like I believe Wellbutrin or um, what's the one? Shantix. There's like a, Shantix is one. They give you crazy dreams. Uh, and I wonder if that is in any way related. And also um, you always hear about people saying, oh, don't eat, you know, spicy food before 
bedtime because that'll make you have crazy dreams too. And um, I read a, a quick study from Charles Bay, who's a sleep medicine doctor uh, at Sleep Disorders Center in Cleveland, saying that heightened metabolism and temperature uh, can lead to more brain activity, um, prompting more action uh, during that phase that's so crucial for dreaming that you mentioned, Ben, rapid eye movement. Yeah, it's, it's, I mean, it's a real thing. It's your, your natural state for most human beings is to encounter REM sleep during your sleep cycles until DARPA finally re releases the technology to free us from sleep. Uh, <laughs> if DARPA, if you're listening and you need a test subject, I can't volunteer my colleagues, but I am so there. Uh, yeah. So when you, when you quit ingesting marijuana in one way or another, then your, your body is going to naturally resume its normal functions. Matt, I think, I, I know that um, chronic marijuana usage does have an effect on the parietal lobe, but I'm with you, man. I, I, think we're, uh, I think we're talking about the pineal gland in particular when we're, when we're thinking in terms of like third eye, et cetera, et cetera. You know, unrelated, one thing we didn't get to in that episode was the calcification of the pineal gland. Have you guys heard about this? Yeah, it's a real thing. yeah. That was that was one of the major things, and and it's it's connected to the fluoride conspiracies, right? Mm -hmm. And if you go to WebMD, you can actually read an article about calcification of the pineal gland, and it always sounded to me like something that was just okay, yeah, whatever. That's a that's a theory. <laughs> and fluoride's going to calcify your the inside of your brain and some little gland you got in there. Well, it. It is actually true in in a lot of ways, but it's also true for most parts of your body. Calcification is a thing that can occur. It's not directly related to fluoride, although fluoride can play a hand in it. Um, yeah, if you take a bunch of fluoride, yeah. Y yeah, if you're super dosing fluoride, it could be an issue. But generally, calcification comes with age. That's what you need to know because it has to do with usage. Uh, specifically parts of the brain because there's so much blood that flows through there constantly. All the little things like calcium, like other minerals and, and stuff that's in your blood gets deposited in small amounts at different times in your body, especially in your brain and in your pineal gland. So, Isn't the pineal gland the one that was in like Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas as like a pure pineal gland like of a human being and if you, you eat it, it'll like make you trip harder than you've ever tripped in your life? Adrenal yeah, gland. It's kind of yeah, adrenal Maybe a dr gland. Oh, sorry, sorry. But yeah. yeah, okay. But but is what about the pineal gland? Does it contain any hormones that that are released that would cause some sort of hallucinatory effects, or am I just mixing my glands? It makes melatonin, which people take as a sleep supplement. Sleepy time times. stuff. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah, yeah. It basically monitors when when it's time for you to sleep. Uh, it's kind of awesome. It's a little alarm. It's like, how much light is there? What what time of year is it? Essentially, and it can tell by the amount of light that is coming into your eyes, generally. It relates to one of the reasons that people always say, turn off your phone or, you know, put your phone in night mode or whatever. Make the lights warm and dark or as dim as you can possibly get them as you're trying to go to sleep. Because in a strange way, you guys, I think it mimics like maybe the candlelight or campfire or that low amber light that we used to get <laughs> humans used to get when it was nighttime. Uh, I'm, I'm interested to know how much of that is actually an evolutionary function. Okay. Jumping back to what you said at the very beginning of this, right after we heard the message, Ben, uh, REM sleep and how marijuana kind of tamps down on that. I didn't know this was a thing. I had no mm -hmm. idea. Uh, REM sleep within the sleep cycles, one cycle lasts about 90 minutes, REM, uh, rapid eye movement, sleep, is where dreams occur. Generally, that's where most dreams occur. And, and you generally don't remember anything that occurs in REM sleep unless you wake up in that cycle, within the REM cycle, or like right at the end of it, like right as it's kind of exiting out. That's when you'll wake up and go, oh my gosh, I remember everything that just occurred. That was a crazy dream. Uh, and that's, you know, when the dream journals are super handy. Um, hmm. It's weird to me to think that this drug that is so ubiquitous right now is uh, preventing many of us from having those intense dreams. Because, you know, if you look at dream theory, one of the things that they do is help us, again, from an evolutionary perspective and psychologically, uh, not work through and process things that we've experienced in the day, but it's like the brain is 
like reorging in a way, like playing back stuff that's occurred, remembering things, putting things away. Uh, it's weird to think that this drug that is so helpful to so many people is somehow preventing that, which feels like a long term, a, um, a long term need that each human has to go through those REM cycles and to process things in their sleep effectively. I'm just wondering what I'm wondering what effect that's having on maybe America or the globe or just people who are smoking more and more marijuana on a regular mm. basis. Well, it's interesting too because uh, honestly, uh, JGG, if I could call you that, uh, honestly, there's not much science about this. And if you check out articles like uh, the Cut. Why your dreams go crazy when you stop smoking weed? Shout out to Jesse Single, uh, Singal. Uh, there, you'll find that the experts don't agree. As a matter of fact, they're they're questioning the uh, the accuracy of studies that were done before. There there were six studies that were acknowledged in the past. There are problems with some of the methodology, and they were back in the seventies. Also, I'll point out, and this is obvious to any. Uh, any weed enthusiast in the crowd today, the weed from the 1970s is not the weed from 2022. It's way different. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's not your it's grandpa's It's literally flag. your granddad's weed. That's what that is. Yeah. 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 And this, uh, so there will be, a, strains are bred to have uh, higher amounts of psychoactive substances, right? So if, if those substances do influence your sleep schedule or, you know, your sleep cycles, then it would follow that a higher percentage of that stuff would have more of an effect, right? It, and, you know, you need to do a placebo experiment to see what happens if somebody f smokes real weed one day and then they smoke that fake uh, wizard weed or whatever it was uh, the next day. Do they sleep the same way? And then also... You know, how do you control for all the other variables? Because sometimes when people make a big decision to quit something, like if someone says, I'm going to quit smoking weed, it often comes with other life changes. And each of those life changes may have an effect on your sleep cycle in, in ways that you may, may not predict at first.